Hey you guys, I'm, I'm having some technical problems, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing this right. Hang on one second. Let me get over to the other page so I can see if you see me. Can you see me? Let me refresh. Is it working? <laughs> okay, um, so my hand says that it's it's going. I don't know if you can see me or not, or if I'm just talking to myself. Let me wait for a second, and I'm looking at the chat. Um, so it's saying that, no, you can't see me. I can't see me either. Oh, gosh. Woo. It says that I'm streaming, but I'm not. Can you see me, for real? Working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> I put a delay on it, so. Okay, um, so my. Okay, <laughs> thanks, you guys. <laughs> this is my first time. Yay! Okay, this is my first time doing a live. Um, anything by myself, so uh, if I have any technical problems, just let me know. Can you hear me okay? Because I just realized I forgot to put my ear plug in. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for coming to join in on the live uh, Etsy Q&A. Um, I'm, my plan is to not pay too much attention to the chat, especially at first, um, because I will get sidetracked into seeing what everyone's saying. Um, what, I, <laughs> what I am going to do uh, is I've gotten all the questions that people have submitted um, through YouTube, Facebook, whatnot, and I broke them down into sections. So like a shipping and pricing section and a tags and title section. And my plan is to go through the section and then I will uh, check over in the chat once I'm done with that section and see if there are any additional questions pertaining to that. So that's the plan. So <laughs> cross fingers. Um, so let me see just real quick who's over there. I see Thrifty Treasures, that's Tanya, and Lori Morales, picking up the pace. Randy Collier, that's my husband. Um, <laughs> do, you, do I need to put the earbuds on? Let me know. So, okay, this makes me feel better. There's not a million people watching. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and get started. Um, the first section I'm going to start answering the questions on <clears throat> is the shipping and pricing. And, uh, Katie sent a couple questions. One was, uh, I'm wondering how you go about setting your shipping prices for U.S. and international. I have heard about a calculated shipping option, but I haven't seemed to figure it out yet. So I wanted to show you what that looks like real quick. So I'm going to screen share. And let me see. Screen sharing. And that is the screen share. I hope you can see it. Let me get over there because that's not the page that you want. Hang on, it's coming. Oh, I thought I had this all set up. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Let me go back one and see how that goes. Do do do. Nope, that's not it either. So. Okay, down, down here on, um, on Etsy, you can create shipping profiles, and um, you can name them and everything. You know what, it might be helpful if you saw mine. So let me go over and show you my shipping profiles. Um, <laughs> shipping profiles. So when you are um, selling on Etsy, you can create different shipping profiles like this. Um, Depending on, so if I have something that I know generally costs, you know, around $3 to ship, I'll just click on this shipping profile and it'll pop in all of the things that I've calculated out already. I hope I'm making sense. So I know pretty much to ship anywhere in the U.S. it'll cost $350. I will have calculated how much it would cost to ship to Canada and then like everywhere else in the world. Um, so that is how I create my shipping profiles. Well, I keep flipping to the wrong page. So I have a bunch of those already um, figured out. So I can just, you know, select that whenever I'm creating my listing based on how much I want to charge for shipping. Um, let me see if I answer all the questions. 
about the calculated shipping, um, I have two that I set up for calculated shipping. And basically what that is, is you go in and you create a profile name for that shipping um, option. And then you enter your zip code and all of that. But then you have to select, have I clicked on the wrong one? Oh, yeah. Um, you'll have to let Etsy know like the size of the box. And I feel like this is not the right page. Let me show you. Let me click on one of these. You will have to... Um, Man, okay, I pulled it up, and now, of course, I can't find it. But basically, I'm getting out of this. Hang on. Basically, with the Etsy um, calculated shipping, you'll go in, you'll say where it's going, where it's coming from, you know, the size of the box, the weight of the box. You have to enter in all of that information up front. And um, I don't use it really because... To me, I just kind of guesstimate when I'm creating my shipping uh, profiles, and usually it's up a little bit. Every now and then I'll have some that uh, the shipping is over, like they haven't paid enough, and I just have to eat it, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, but what I do is in my description is let people know that if my shipping is over by, you know, about $2, then I refund the difference in the shipping. And it just makes it easier for me, it gives me a little more wiggle room. And that way up front, I'm not having to calculate exactly what box I'm gonna put this in and exactly how much it weighs and you know fill that all in when I'm creating all my listings. It's just up to you. Um, I haven't really used that. Let me come peek at the chat real quick and see if there were any questions. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, that's see, uh, Thrifty Treasures. She's saying that she has a jewelry profile, 350, and that you know basically covers if she's going to ship some jewelry. She already knows just to click on that jewelry profile. Okay, how am I doing? Doing good. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Did I get all that? I'm also curious. This is a question. I'm also curious how you set your prices without completed listing option, like on eBay. I'm having a hard time setting a good price because I've heard some items sell for a lot higher than they would on eBay. Um, so yeah, what I do is I generally price high. And um, this is gonna come up in a minute, but I cross post on eBay and Etsy when I can. Um, if it's not vintage, I don't put it on Etsy unless it's supply. But generally I price things a bit high because I have on eBay, I have the um, best offer option that people can send me an offer whether I take it or not and I've just started using the you know decline offer if it's below this amount because I would sometimes get ridiculous offers um, so I'll show you and, and then on Etsy wait am I getting off of this is that right because somebody else asked me uh, I, Barbara said I heard you mention in your videos that you accept an offer on an item even on Etsy um, do you put that in your ad or something in your store. And so I wanted to show you what I do for that. So I'm going to screen share again. And I hope I'm doing it right again. So where do they go? Um, we already did that. And no, we're not there yet. Where did you go? Uh, I'm looking for the shop store. And this is what I do. I sing to myself. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Um, so here we go. This is, I hope you can see the, this is my uh, store and right here in my shop announcements, it says welcome. You'll find all sorts of vintage and antique items here. I'm always willing to negotiate, no, negotiate reasonable offers and bulk mailings. So that lets, um, people know that I'm willing to negotiate. So you can put whatever in there <clears throat> and let me show you how to get there if you want to, because you would think that it was edit this about page, but no, it's not. Um, shop settings, info and appearance. So you'll go to your info and appearance, which is also along here somewhere. There it is down there. And then down here you can um, create your shop announcement. Uh, and that's where I also add in, you know, sometimes I'll pop in a coupon code or something like that. So that is that part. Oh no, well, that's fine, whatever. So, <clears throat> coming back to you. All right, let me see if I have any more shipping. My question for, uh, this is from Celia. 
My question is for shipping to Etsy. How do you figure out shipping costs? Is it the same from state to state? And it just kind of depends. Usually if you're shipping within your own state, it's not quite as um, expensive. But what I use <clears throat> is the post office site. And I'll show you real quick what I do. Where did you go? There you are. I am presenting. I hope I'm answering everyone's questions. So yeah, I come to the post office site and let's say, you know, I'm shipping here from me, uh, 7754, that's me, to, you know, wherever else in, in Texas. And I want a little package. And it's like, eh, let's make it a not first class one. One pound, nine ounces. Nine you. Um, so this will kind of give me an idea of what my price will be. You know, it's not medium mail. Let's just do regular priority mail. Priority mail. There we go. So I'll know it's going to cost me $5.32 if I ship it from me to there. Um, but then if I want to find out <clears throat> where, how much it would be to go somewhere farther, then what I usually do is find like an Alaska zip code or a, a California or Hawaii Let's do 90210 <laughs> and see, you know, how much it would be to send it over to California. And here you see, yeah, it's a little bit more going to California. But so what I generally do <clears throat> is I estimate for the furthest. So when I set my shipping profiles, because you never know, somebody in Houston buying it, somebody in California buying it. So I just estimate for for the furthest, and then like I said, if it's more than $2 off, I just refund the difference. I don't really have to worry about that usually on eBay because most of the time I have free shipping on eBay, um, but that's a different story. Let me go peek over at the chat and see if there's any other questions before I move on. Let's see. <clears throat> um, Lori says, is there a way on Etsy to find sold listings and the price that something sold for? On eBay, you could do this, which helps price items. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so basically, looking for the sold listing items, um, there's not really a way within Etsy. But if you do a Google search, sometimes you'll do a Google search, and something will pop up and like, oh, yeah, I found the same item. And you can go into... Um, I didn't pull anything up like this, but I'll, we'll, we can try it. Um, and you'll pull it up on Etsy and they'll say, so sorry, this item has sold. And you're like, man. But there is a way to find out um, how much it's sold for. So if you do that and you pull it up and, and it's sold, you can still find out what it's sold for. And I'll just show you that real quick. I did do a video on this. But I'm happy to share. And here we go. Let me get over to the right page. Clicky, clicky. Okay, so I'm going to go to my shop because I know that I sold things, so I can find a sold item really quick. So <clears throat> let's do the Jugglosaurus. Let's say you pop this, you know, you're like, oh, yay, I found one. I'm going to um, be able to find out how much it sold for and share, you know, whatever, figure out my price. So what you do is you come over and you're going to right click but not on the picture, because if you right click on the picture, it tells you, gives you picture options. You want to right click kind of off the picture and come to show page source and click that. And it's going to pull up all kinds of mumbo jumbo. And then you're going to um, right click again. No, no, that's not right. You're going to do, I have an uh, Mac, so I'm doing command F to do find, like find on page. It might be control F on a PC. And then I'm typing in price. And then it's going to find price on the page for me and show me what it sold for. So right there, it shows me that it sold for $32.99. So it's not as easy like with eBay to find the what it sold for, but yeah, that's not too bad, you know. And, and I was really glad when I found that out, found out how to do that. Let's see. Did I get everything there? Okay. So yay, I haven't updated the page, but it looks like we have 13 people watching. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I gotta take a drink. Sippy, sippy. All right, that's a little graveyard girl nod there. <laughs> so Joanna, um, 
Okay, so Joanna says, I'm thinking about starting an Etsy store, but to be honest, the only thing that is stopping me right now is that I'm terrified I will do something wrong when I go to ship my items to the buyer. Um, she was worried that she won't be able to find the customer's address and know what the payment looks like on PayPal. Um, basically, it's, it's just like it would be on eBay. So when someone buys something, um, I can't do my side-by-side -side here. Uh, so it kind of throws me off. So basically when someone um, buys something, let me get this over here. Ah, I'm going to have to get used to this. Now I'm not sure why I pulled this up. Uh, when someone buys something, it's going to look just like it does on, see I don't want to open my orders because I'm going to show people's names if I do that. Okay, stop. Let me rethink this. Basically, it's just like on eBay. When, when someone buys something, um, it'll create a little page. You click on the orders, and it'll pop up the order, and you'll get all the choices on how to ship it and things like that. It's pretty much exactly the same, as long as you've got all your shipping all in there and everything. As far as um, what the payments would look like on PayPal, and there's another question about the payments, how they do payments on Etsy. I'm going to go back to that in a second. Um, okay, I'll just do it now because that, that'll take us to the end of the shipping and pricing. So on Etsy, they kind of do their payments. If you if you sell on Amazon, like Amazon FBA, you know, you make your, your sales and then they kind of chunk all your money and then on certain days they do their payouts. Uh, it's kind of like that because Etsy has direct checkout and so people can pay with, you know, whatever credit card they've got. And so they kind of chunk it together and kind of, they do, and then there are certain payout dates. And once you're more established on Etsy, you can request your money sooner if you'd like. Um, but what they also do now is if someone does pay with PayPal, that money goes straight to PayPal. They don't hold on to that for you. So direct checkout money is held and then released. PayPal money, automatically PayPal. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, let me look over here before I move on. Let's see. Okay, so let me refresh this just to make sure. That and so they kind of. Okay, all right. So I don't see any other questions. Let me say hi to everybody real quick. Oh my gosh, hi. <laughs> hey, look, it's me. Okay, hi, Texas Gal Treasures and Thrifty Treasures. Uh, Lori Morales, Randy Collier, picking up the pace. Who else? Who else? I saw somebody else in there. I see Pat Henley and Wendy and Sean. Hey, y'all. Uh, Fun Stuff 24. Doop doo. Is that everybody? That's everybody. Whew. Okay, just between you and me, I was getting really nervous. And I was like, I'm going to look down there and it's going to be like 120 people watching, which would be really arrogant, but also made me like really nervous. So it makes me feel a lot better that there's only like. 11 people. <laughs> Is that weird? Maybe. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. I'm moving on. I'm moving on to the tags and titles section. So Christian um, sent a question. It said, I just started using, started selling on Etsy, and I'd like to hear about how to effectively use tags and what tags uh, to use, how I decide. So I pulled up some. Okay, I pulled up a screen share for that, for the tags. Start screen share. Oh man, this time is flying. So let me come back over to the right page for you. So when you create a listing, um, is this, do you see this? Okay, good. Does this look like a big mess to you? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Okay, I don't know. Whatever, I'm going with it. So when you create a listing, this is what it looks like on your end as the creator. You'll scroll all the way down, and down here is where there are tags. And this is sort of, uh, this is to help with the search engine optimization um, for people to search for your stuff. So here you'll see that I've entered in all of these different things that would go with my item, which is a spool of um, ribbon. So you want to use tags that people would be searching for for your item.
item. Um, now, some of these, like red and green, I was stretching there because really, who's, I don't know, right? If they're searching for red and green ribbon, then okay. Um, so basically, let me see what I'm showing you. This is what it looks like. Either you get 13 tags, but I was going to show you something else. Oh, because there was one that, because a lot of times when I'm looking to try to figure out what, what, tag to use I get stuck and I, I you know I'll get you know so many in there and then I can't remember like oh what else should I tag so I go and I look at other listings <clears throat> so I will you know type in something that's similar to mine and here's what I generally do the ones that pop up towards the top other than the ads these ones people are paying to be up there but the next layer of ones they have tagged theirs so well that they pop up first so these are the ones that I like to look at to see what tags that they have used so that I, um, yeah, to get them up on top. Now, they have not used all of their title, but we'll get to that later. So I'll scroll down. I'm looking at their tags. And this is surprising because, I mean, Jacquard Ribbon is there, but their tags are, meh, you know, they're okay. So basically that's what I do. I hope I'm answering the question. I'll find one similar. And then I'll go look, you know, I'll look in their title and see if there's any words that I haven't used that might be good tags. And then I'll come down and look at the tags at the bottom. And sometimes these are not necessarily the same tags as you put in. I've found that um, when I look at some of my other listings. But anyway, that's what I do. I'll start looking around for other tags in that way. Why did I leave this one up? I don't know. Anyway. <sighs> All right. Is that it for that one? Let's see. So, yeah, I, I try to pick the tags that will be what people would want to find, pointing it at that. And I, I really try to use them all because the more the more you're able to be found, the better. Right? And I, <clears throat> I've gotten a lot better about using as many of the title characters as I can as well. That's coming. Sinister Butterfly asks, <laughs> um, how do you write titles for Etsy as opposed to eBay titles? How do you narrow down your tag choices? Um, so, you know, in, on eBay, you get so many characters, not a whole lot. But on Etsy, you get a ton. You get like 140 characters. So let me show you what I've got. So kind of the same thing. Oh, I think I clicked the wrong thing. Hang on. Um, just kind of like with the tags, what I do is, is sort of the same thing. I will go through and I will find items that are as similar to my items as possible to put into my title, you know. So this is what it's called, you know, Jugglosaurus, Dinosaurs for Juggling. And then I just start throwing in everything I can think of, you know, Blue Dinosaurs, Juggling Beanbags, The Brand, Chasely Toys, Learn to Juggle, um, Juggling Kit. You just kind of throw in as much as you can. Um, just like with the tags, you know, here I had to look up some info about Ned Kelly. So yeah, it's a plastic Ned Kelly doll. I had to look up what his actual name was, where he was famous, you know, Australian outlaw figure, infamous character, you know, things that he was famous for, you know, in different, no, no, that's not what I want. Um, you know, like here is, it was another nickname that he had, you know, so just trying to throw in as much as I can to, um, draw traffic that people would see here. This is one of my older listings. One, I didn't use all my characters. This is probably why it's been sitting here so long. Two, I don't put my title, my prices like that anymore. I usually try to do like $9.99 or something like that. You learn, you learn. So, right. I hope that answers the question. I And with eBay, you really have to, you don't, you know, on eBay, stop. Let me see. So on eBay, I wouldn't repeat myself so often. If I had dinosaurs in there once, that was it. I wouldn't have dinosaurs, juggling dinosaurs, blue dinosaurs. Um, I would just, you know, narrow it down, like pair off all the fat, if you know what I mean. Uh, okay, let me check over here, see if I have any questions. Um, ever use the Etsy payment system for local sales? Not me. Um, I am really... Uh, I've seen that, uh, no, where you can sell something locally and, and you have it on your Etsy store and you can sell it. I never have, no. Does Etsy and eBay import 
what tool do I have to duplicate? Yeah, they don't have an import tool. <laughs> I've been doing from scratch, but I um, only have five items in my Etsy store so far. Yeah, I basically when I started um, cross-posting, it took some time. I would have to do so, you know, five or ten a, a day. And now it's just part of my listing process. As soon as I list it on, I usually list on Etsy first because I find it more time consuming with the longer titles and the longer tags and things. Um, but, and then I, as soon as I'm done with that, I go over and post it on eBay. Um, and that way, as soon as I've got that done, I can just delete the, that little file of folder of photos and move on. So <clears throat> it doesn't take very long to, once you've got one listing done, just, I don't know, I just, it's just part of the process now. Um, Cause I copy and paste, basically I copy and paste my title, my super long title from Etsy over, and then it does the search for what category to pop it in. And then once my listing pulls up, then I pare down my title to make it fit on eBay. And then I just go over and copy and paste my description into eBay and, um, I and on Etsy, you know, you only have five photo choices, but I almost always have more than five that I've taken. So then I just drop in all the photos I've taken and go from there. Um, so it doesn't normally take too long once you get in the groove of it. Um, yeah, I know somebody said you somebody needs to write a program for that. Get on it, Tanya. Um, let's see. Also, what store inventory quantity did you start seeing? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I started selling on Etsy regularly about, let me think, about two years ago. Um, and so it was pretty, sm pretty small at first, you know, I would get a sale here or there. Um, and still, you know, you have those weeks where it's just kind of spotty. I don't know what, what it would be at. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but regularly, I mean, it was probably over a hundred items in my shop before I, it was really regular. Um, and as you saw, there's still a lot of items in my shop that have been there for a long time. So it's kind of a hard question when people ask me, you know, how many items, because if I have the wrong items in my shop, that nobody wants, it doesn't matter. You know, that bracelet's been in there for a long time. Um, okay. Okay. Let me move on. I hope I'm answering all the questions that, that are. Okay, let me check one more time before I move to the next section. Do, 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 do. Oh, hey, come up, King. Hey, hey. Um, all right, so moving on. Here we go, one more CD. Um, so the next section is getting views and sales. This is the biggest um question that I have or concerns that I have especially especially from um newcomers or you know like a lot of my UK friends say uh eh, nobody does Etsy not nobody but Etsy's not really big over here nobody's really successful not very many people so I don't know I sell to the UK a lot so you would think that that it would be you know I think Ken Chapman needs to get on Etsy. We'll just say because he can find some cool stuff that probably would sell very well on Etsy. And because he finds things that we would not be able to find over here. That's the thing. You've got to find something that maybe nobody, you know, overseas, we people here would pay for it because you're finding the cool stuff. Um, yeah, that we just wouldn't find here. So, I mean, like my, we got a new wedding ring for my, our 10 year we got a real wedding ring for our 10 year anniversary. And this one I, I got off from a lady on Etsy and she's in France. Well, you know, I'm not going to find this cool art deco wedding ring um, here, but you know, she found it in France. So cool. anyway, okay. I'll get off my soapbox. All right. Getting views and sales. Okay. Amal asked, um, Oh, he was wondering why some people have multiple shops, multiple Etsy shops. Um, I know they try to be more like a one-of-a-kind item shop, but does it really matter? What do you think? Yes, you're making sense. Um, so I have one shop, and it's just like a big old everybody's in there happy shop. What I could do is like get all my books and open up, you know, Texas Gal Bookshop and get all the jewelry and open a Texas Gal Jewelry Shop. Um, I would have personally, I have trouble multitasking so that would be a challenge for me it might it might help sales because people know oh hey I bought a 
book from Texas Gal Books and let me go back to Texas Gal Books and see what else she's got. Um, it's something to think about. I know um, Teresa from, my brain just went, boop, Thrifty Teresa, she's got a couple shops. She's got one where, because she, she makes rosaries and, you know, so she's got a rosary shop and she's got her vintage shop and I think she just opened another one. So I think she's got three on there. So it's something people choose to do, just like when, I mean, but like saying people have multiple eBay shops. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't do it because I, like I said, I had to just, I was on Bonanza and I had to finally just quit doing Bonanza because it was just too much. I couldn't, it was just personally too much for me, keeping up with everything. <clears throat> okay, Lori Morales, she's in the chat. Hey, Lori. Uh, I'm just beginning to cross post some of my eBay on the Etsy. Um, She's been pinning on Pinterest and tweeting her listings. Not sure what it takes to get viewers to see my listing and favorite my items to get sales. Um, so part of it is, you know, it, it takes time. Part of it is, you know, there's so much involved in it. Um, so part of it is it takes time. And part of it is, are you selling what people want? I'm not saying you're not, but just like with me with that bracelet, obviously nobody wants it. Um, <laughs> so it's like, are you? And, and with just a few items on there, it's kind of hard to, to gauge, you know. So um, do you have what people want? And then, like, what do the listings look like? Because, um, yeah, you know, like, do you have good pictures, good description? Um, I hate to say it, say it like that because I don't want you to – I haven't looked at your shop. So, But just generally, like, when you look at people's shops, you can tell, you know, and then some people price way too low, and it's almost like saying, you know, I'm not good enough. But I don't know. It's a weird uh, mental thing. I don't know. Uh, when when purchasers, when buyers look at that and say, oh, this is maybe not so much a, I'm trying to find the words I'm looking for, professional, I don't know. I think you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but anyway, another way, um, so pinning is good, um, getting a Pinterest board going, getting people following it. And then <clears throat> another way, and I still have not made the videos for this, is um, on, on Etsy there are teams. And there are different views about, well, especially on eBay, doing likes for likes, you know, because it's not natural, like telling people, you come like my page and I'll come like your page, unless you're in the same niche or something like that. But on Etsy, there for me, I, I've seen the value in joining the teams and doing, you know, following each other. Because in that, in on Etsy, the more people that are favoriting your item, the more people are seeing your item. The more people favoriting your shop, the more people are seeing your item. So let's say Teresa comes and she, let's say she's got 500 people following her. Well, if she comes and favorites one of my items, then that item shows up in all of those 500 people's feeds, you know, so there's that many more people seeing my item. So I'm going to show you real quick where that is if you are on, um, et on Etsy. And here we go. Now, I haven't been participating in the teams so much lately as I should, um, but basically, especially when I first got started, I did this a lot, like at night when we're watching TV, um, or if I'm watching a live show on YouTube, you can do this. So down here, there's a, a section that says join the community, and there's teams, forums. Oop, okay. Uh, so before I get started on that, I just have to say, Etsy has got amazing online tools they have got videos to help you do stuff they've got forums they've got it's amazing and so these are the teams you can search in teams let's say you sell Christian stuff like rosaries or what I don't know why that's in my brain there are teams for that and you can come over and see you know how many people are on that team um, and then here are my team. So this is actually a team that I created called Super Pickers. Um, and then it's just kind of going. So let's go into Super Pickers. I hope you can see this. Are y'all seeing this? All right. So here's the Super Picker team. And <clears throat> these are some of what they would call like games um, that people play. So heart the first page. So what that is is, you know, go over to the shop in the, the feed before yours. So here we go. So here's this guy. So to participate, I would come over, click on his shop, and then go heart everything in, on the first page. Heart, 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 heart. Putting hearts on everything. Ooh, he's got some pretty stuff. Randy, if you're in the in the chat, take note. <laughs> 
And then I would come over here and say, you know, okay, I did this for, you know, Greg. And then the next person would come along and do the same for me. And while maybe, you know, like I said, some people feel like, oh, well, that's not organic. People are not really liking your stuff to like it. You know what? I got people's eyes on it because everybody, everything that he likes or hearts, every single person that he uh, has following him is going to show up. So he's got 638 followers. So everything of mine that he hearts is going to show up in their feed, which is fine by me, you know, and then how many people do I have? Everything that I heart of somebody else's, see, I have 613 followers. Everybody that follows me will get a, will get that in their feed. So there, there are lots of different games, you know, follow, follow and favorite the different shops. Um, hang on, let me stop this one second. Uh, and then there are things called treasuries, which pe some people really, really love. I like them okay. Um, there's just all, I mean, literally, there's tons of different, there's tons of different games and groups to join. There's local, local groups. Let me see what other teams I'm in. I'm in a lot. <laughs> Shop guides, daily Etsy sales, promotion, commotion. I mean, they're just, there's just a bunch. Some teams um, ask you to, you know, answer some questions before you join, and some some teams are like, the more the merrier. Come on in. Okay, let me see where we are. Okay, so hey, hi, Elise, hi, hi, hi. Um, okay, good. <laughs> okay, hey, Holly, how's it going? <clears throat> okay, so I'm coming over. Another sippy sippy. She's got some magnets out. If you if you don't know who Graveyard Girl is. She, I was just in her Swamp Family shop the other day, and she's got a magnet that says Sippy Sippy on it. And I was like, well, maybe I should get that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thrift and Picking Country Style asks, uh, how many listings do you have up usually? How often do you list? Do you cross list? I have like, I think, 600 items in my shop right now. I do cross list. Let me look. How many items do I have? Um, I am looking, where did you go? I'm shuffling through all these pages. You can't see me doing it. Okay, here we go. View shop. So I currently have uh, 609 items in my shop. I do cross post, um, so everything in my Etsy shop goes on eBay. Most of my eBay stuff, you know, if it's not vintage, I already answered that one. Um, how often do I list? I try to list every day, but think, you know, life happens and I don't so uh, stop that right there yeah I try to list every day um, what I normally do is I take a big bunch of photos and then go from there and then just edit photos and list and and so on I'm not so good at listing on my phone I know some people are really good at that but I'm not so I don't know like this week I haven't listed a lot because I ran out of all my photos and I hadn't had the opportunity to take more photos. So yesterday I did, and when I'm done here, I have a bunch of stuff I'm gonna take photos of as well. And uh, Julie at the Thrifty Paper Garden, she said, uh, I've heard that I need to set a selling goal. I don't, I mean, not, not, not within Etsy. Like personally, I try to sell $200 or more because I'm part-time and I'm, I'm spotty on my listing and things, so. Um, but not not in stone. I think set in stone. And woo, two daughters getting married. Mm. That's a lot <laughs> to buy to spend. All right. Uh, when you okay. Um, oh, and then she asked about how do you combat people that don't read the description? Because on my last video, my Alf didn't. Um, yeah, somebody had bought it on eBay, and then they didn't read the description. When they read the description, they would decide they didn't want the sale. It's just part of the, you know, you can get upset about it or not because it's just part of it when you're a reseller that people are going to not pay attention, right? So, yeah. Okay, before I move to the next section, let me look over and see if there's any new questions. Let me refresh over here. Ah, 17 people. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so far, no new questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So next section is what to sell. We kind of covered that. Oh, that's the last section. Oh, gosh. 
Yeah, stretch it out. Day to day with McKay um, asked, okay, so let's take jewelry. Um, you seem to sell a number of vintage pieces of jewelry. What? Uh, when at the stores and sales looking at jewelry, how do you know what uh, you're looking at that will do well? Or do you think, hey, this is cool and different looking. Uh, I'm going to buy this for a buck or two and hope that I can find out that it's worth something. Yeah, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll look at things. One, it, you know, unless I can tell it's outstanding, it has to be cheap because I don't like to spend a lot. Two, um, if it's costume jewelry, I'll look for certain brands like Whiting and Davis. Um, what are some other ones? Angie's not in the chat. She knows all the good brands. Um, but you, you'll see, you know, just by the quality of it. Yeah, mostly it's just, you know, if it looks cool, if it looks like something that people would like, if it's funky weird, then, yeah, that's what I would go with. I hope that helps. Uh, or if it looks like it might be real, real stone, some sort of real stone or... Um, when this is the same, this is still from day to day with McKay. Um, what are a few things you cue in on when looking for vintage items at stores and sales that will sell on Etsy? How, meaning, how do you choose between vintage sellers and just old junk? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I just it's hit or miss. You just have to try different things, like the the accordion hooks that I've been selling. I just thought one day I was at an estate sale and it was just and there was pre, pretty much nothing left there. But in the garage there were two of these accordion hooks on the wall, you know, still nailed to the wall in the garage. And I was just like, so we sell those, you know? I, I guess I, I felt like I wanted to go home with something. So, uh, you know, she sold those to me and I listed them and they sold really well. So I just started picking them up uh, for a buck or two and. And they've been selling really well. So you just kind of fall into things and find something with the cufflinks. You know, I started picking up cufflinks and tie tacks, tie bars, because they were small and easy and usually pretty cheap. And then I could get a pretty good return on them uh, when I resold them. So yeah, just kind of, I don't know, but I have a whole room full of stuff back there that I have to list and find out if it's going to be a, a winner or not. Uh, okay, Wendy L asks oh no she's not asking she's just saying she's gonna be there oh gosh okay so any tip for newbies um I would say just you, you know just get started look around at you know items that are selling that are similar to yours and check out you know what other people are selling them how they're describing them how they're taking their pictures um, you know people that are um, showing up higher in the search feed, you know, what are they doing differently than than what you're doing? So just to get ideas, I mean, so slowly, I mean, I can show you again, even with that one screen share, let me see, even with that one um, bracelet, you could even tell like the quality of the photo was different, you know, you can see like the background's a little darker than the rest and you know, so like these two have been on there forever. So just slowly as I've, you know, been on Etsy, see like this is, these are two things that I have listed from a long time ago. And you can see like there's my hand, just, I mean, randomness that I, you know, had to learn slowly over time. These are all kind of new listings. <clears throat> just trying to find something older, an older listing to show you. But I think those will do. I think you get it. Um, so, yeah, trying to have consistency. Some of my photos were pretty bad when I started. This is an older one. Um, you know, some of my photos were like, that's an older one, that's an older one. <laughs> they start. They sort of stand out like a sore thumb once you get used to looking for them. Okay, anyway. So, yeah, so I just started having to see, like, what other people did, how they took their pictures. How they describe things because I even you know the way I wrote my descriptions it used to be just like this little sentence but now I started and it, this made it way easier for me too. Um, had sort of a template so I put description and then fill that in material what is made of condition condition measurements brand so it's like a little template that I 
that I use. And then all of the information under that, you know, are all my little shop notes and things that people can read through if they choose to. Um, yeah. So that, that helped me too with just listing faster because sometimes I would like, I don't know what to write. And so that would, here, I'll pull it up again. That, oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing again. Um, that would cause me to take a long time to list things because, you know, I'd have this plate and like, oh, I don't know what to say about this plate, you know. But once I started creating a, a template kind of like this, description, measurement, condition, brand, it really streamlined my listing. And then all of this other stuff down here, you know, check out my blog, go to my favorites, blah, 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 whatever. So, yeah, that really helped me a lot. Um, okay. Were there anything else over here I was going to show you? No, 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 no. I'm going to close that out. No, no, don't close it because you might need it in a second. I'm lost. Where's my other page? There it is. Okay. Yay. Okay, let me see. That's all my questions. Oh, no. And I have like 10 minutes left. Okay. Oh, hey, woman of a certain age. How's it going? <laughs> Kimberly. <laughs> yeah, Crown Trafari. Um, do I use social media to promote your Etsy? I do. I do. Um, I can show you that real, real quick, too. Um, I do use Pinterest more so than anything else. Um, and like I said, I'm not really consistent all the time doing it. Oh my gosh, did I share the wrong page? I think I did. <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> stop, I say. Do over. Okay, this one is the one I want. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. I have no idea. Doesn't matter, I don't know. Okay, so uh, let's go over to Pinterest real quick and I'll show you. <clears throat> yes, I want to leave this page. I hope you're seeing this. Oh, look, this is my other, my earthworms and marmalade. I'm gonna have to sign out. Oh, how do I sign out? Yes. And I need to sign back in. No, no, no. I wanna sign in with Texas Gal. That, I hope this is the right one. I have so many accounts. Hmm. That doesn't look like an email address. Oh yeah, I'll take that. What? No, no, no. Hang on, you guys. Not now. Oh boy. Okay, I have it signed in with a different different email address. No. Good golly, Pinterest. You are not cooperating with me today. We'll have to talk later. There we are. Okay. No, no, I don't want ads. Let's take a look. So here's what I do. Sorry, this took a long time to get there. And now it's loading. So when I um, promote through, let me see if you're seeing this. Are you seeing this? Do, do, do. Okay, so I, I think you're seeing this. So what I do is, I'm gonna use my men's accessories because that's the one that I do the most often. Um, men's accessories, men's fashion, here we go. So here you can see how many people are following. I have 418 people following my men's fashion board. And what I do is I pin things from my shop, but then I also go through and pin um, other things that I've seen, like. So I have cufflinks and then, so it's not just all about like all of my stuff because who wants to follow a page on Pinterest that's just like all of the stuff I'm selling. So, but I'm a guy, say my husband would come and follow this page because he's like, oh, I really like to dress like this. Oh, I really like that style of suit. I really like the way this guy is dressed. Um, so he would follow for that and for all the tips, you know, Dan Draper and, but then as he's getting all these tips and photos and things, he would also see, <clears throat> you know, things that I'm selling. Like, here's this picture of this guy in this blazer, and he's got this tie bar. Oh, no, my goodness, look right here. Here's a tie bar. You can buy it for me. Um, so that's the way I do it. I don't, you know, oh, how'd that get in there? <laughs> that's weird. So, yeah, 
you know, here's pictures of guys, you know, that have cufflinks. And here's some cufflinks. You know, if I, I have ties, I could put ties in there. Oh, look, he's got cufflinks on. And, you know, there's some cufflinks that are kind of like those cufflinks. I think you get get the idea. So it doesn't have to be with that. I mean, I have some for my books. Let me stop. So like vintage children's books, um, like the little golden books, there are people that do all kinds of crafts and baby showers that are little golden book themes. So there'd be all these pictures of little golden book activities and crafts and things that you do with them. And then, oh, look, there's little golden books you can buy from me right there. <laughs> Whether that's how it's working, I don't know. Okay, so I'm coming to the chat to see if I answered the question. Who did you? Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. Do you find that you sell more of one type of item than another? For instance, do you sell more jewelry, mugs, bric-a-brac, or do you have typically the same? Yeah, it's just kind of all across the board um, with what I sell. Sometimes, you know, a little bit of jewelry, a little bit of, you know, bric-a-brac, you know, porcelain, dolls. It's just kind of all over the board with that kind of stuff. Um, that I that I can tell. I'm sure there are duds. Do you take your items to resale or consignment through store things? Um, so yeah, sometimes with my duds or if my work my workroom gets too crazy, um, I'm either I have an antique booth at a, a local antique mall. Sometimes I'll take things over there to see if they'll move, uh, or I'll put them on a local garage sale site. Um, we did you know, a few months back have a garage sale. So a lot of stuff I just dragged out to the, you know, to the garage sale we had. Um, and then, yeah, there have been times when I'm just so over some of the stuff. I just can't look at it anymore. Bag it up. Then I take it back to redonate. And then at least I can get a, a you know, return um, with the receipt, you know, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's all worth it. It's okay. Um, do you think having, this is Lori, do you think having a Facebook page helps promote your Etsy listing and increase your sales? I don't. <laughs> I, my Facebook page is, I don't know, because it kind of, every now and then I'll post something like new in my Etsy shop, but I didn't want it to be just all that, you know, all like just me putting what I have for sale there. So, you know, I'll post when I have a new video out or cute cat videos or whatever, you know, things that I think my, you know, people on my, I don't say my real friends, but the people that are personal friends might get sick and tired of seeing, you know, or if I find funny Texas stuff, you know, sometimes I'll post it over there because a lot of people that are following the Texas gal page maybe aren't from Texas and they might think some of it's funny or not, whatever. Uh, so it's more just like, I want to share this. I need to find someone to share it with. So, um, okay. Pat says, um, I've been using Facebook groups to sell duds and there are some auction groups out there for just for that. Oh, I'll have to talk to you about that, Pat, because yeah. Oh, and I did do that. If you, you know, this is one of the joys of making friends through, you know, some of these reseller groups. I was so sick and tired of these suits and suit coats and stuff because I, I was watching all these videos and I got inspired. I was going to go try and I sold some and they did great, but I hated photographing them and I hated measuring them and I hate just took so long and I just so I met you know there was a person that I met through one of the um, Facebook groups and he ended up buying a bunch of them off of me for you know a good price and he had to pay the shipping and it was kind of that part I felt bad because like I can't help it this is how much it costs to ship it um, but he bought them and I'm really hoping that he was able to make some money off of all of it so that was really nice too so Okay. Yes, we're seeing your screen with Pinterest. Uh, okay. La di da. Um, I thought Pinterest was going to have a buy it now. Um, <clears throat> I think Pinterest is looking into that, doing a little more sales. And another another avenue that I've been looking at is Instagram too. So um, like thrifty. Teresa, she's had some sales on Instagram, which is really new for me, but I, I've been looking into it and I've got like two pictures up there so far. Um, so let's see. Okay. So Linda, honey, listen, I've had my illustrations on Etsy for ages now. And while I'm getting a few favorites here and there, 
I still haven't sold anything though. What would you recommend? Can my photos be letting me down? It's a possibility. I'd have to look at them and see. And then, um, you know, what kind of keywords are being listed with the, with that to draw the traffic in there. And it's just, it's really, I mean, the market is, is flood and not only say flooded, but you got to work to get, to get some attention on, especially if you're hand making stuff, because I, I, you know, I knit and crochet and stuff. And a while back, I was trying to sell some things on there. Not a thing. Not a thing sold for me. So I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to, <laughs> have to look at it, Linda. All right, so we have two minutes. I made it a whole hour. I didn't say anything too weird, right? Um, <laughs> so let me refresh over here, see if there's any questions. Wow, 26 people, you guys. Um, Gosh, my cheeks are getting really red too, so. Uh, so I don't see any more questions. Let me scroll up one more time. Hey, hey guys. All right, so so yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess I'm gonna call it a couple minutes early because I don't have any more questions. Um, so yeah, let me know what you thought of everything. Let me know if you'd like something like this again or if I've answered all the Etsy questions in the universe and nobody, done, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for coming and hanging out for the live Q and A, everybody. And I will see you later. Bye. Go out and enjoy yourselves.